Here's an idea. Avengers Infinity War can help us understand what it means to own something. So in case you've somehow managed to miss the Marvel movies or have been living under the thing for 10 years, Avengers Infinity War will be coming out soon. So there are going to be some minor Marvel Cinematic Universe spoilers coming up, but we're going to try to tread lightly and only stick to things that appeared in trailers. In Infinity War, Thanos, the villain, wants to kill a whole lot of people. Half the universe, to be precise. To accomplish this, he seeks to make use of the MCU's resident MacGuffin artifact, the Infinity Stones. To massively gloss over backstory from the comics, the Infinity Stones are remnants of an ancient godlike being that when gathered and used with the Infinity Gauntlet, give the wielder the massive power of that ancient pseudo-deity. Thanos wants the Infinity Stones, and if his gauntlet is any indication, he thinks they are rightfully his. By bringing them together, he claims ownership and use over them. But is he right? Even if he gathers all six stones, will he own them? Ownership isn't something we question in our day-to-day -day lives. You either own something, or you don't. But the reasoning behind ownership, and therefore the answer to our question, are surprisingly difficult to explain. Maybe he owns them because he physically possesses them. But if that were the case, wouldn't stealing mean ownership is transferred without any repercussions? Maybe you can only own something if you use it. But then there could easily be multiple owners. So how do we make sense of all of this ownership stuff? We can look to the classics for answers. For example, John Locke of Life, Liberty, and Property fame would think that Thanos does in fact own the Infinity Stone. Locke believed that everything which is unowned is in a state of nature. The only way to remove an object from a state of nature and to come to own it is to mix it with something that is yours. The one thing you intrinsically own, Locke said, was labor. That is, every person owns the work they are capable of doing. Locke mainly talked about the ownership of land and said that by farming the land or building upon it, you would mix labor with it and thus come to own it. But Locke also said you could mix labor with other things. When hunting game, the hunt is the labor, so whoever puts in the effort to get the kill gets the meat. And this is how Thanos can own the Infinity Stones. By searching for them and finding them, Thanos is mixing his labor with the stones, so when he comes to possess them, he also owns them. Locke's theories on ownership can be empirically questioned when we look at other cultures' views on ownership. The Rye Stones of the Yat people are not transferred by possession, but by social consensus. Stones that have fallen into the sea, never to be seen or touched again, can still be owned. They obviously follow different rules, so Locke's rules are incomplete. When we look at the Infinity Stones, we might find that they too follow different rules in the state of nature. But how? Sociologists Peter Berger and Thomas Luckman offer a solution. In their book, The Social Construction of Reality, a treatise in the sociology of knowledge, they suggest that there is more than one reality, and that each of these realities is capable of having their own associated knowledge. So what exactly do they mean by knowledge and reality? Well, in this case, knowledge refers to ascertaining that things exist or what properties those things have. This can be as simple as seeing that the sky is blue or as complex as learning foreign marriage rituals. Reality, on the other hand, refers to all of the things that we perceive through observation or a feeling of some sort. Reality must be present for knowledge to exist, because if there's nothing real to observe, we can't begin to ascertain what properties a real thing has. Thus, knowledge is tied directly to reality. Knowledge pertaining to one reality might be completely meaningless in another. Now, the idea that there are multiple realities may seem unintuitive. After all, there should only be one reality, the world we're all living in right now. But we actually encounter different realities on a daily basis. Berger and Luckman argue that whenever we change our mode of thought from that of a casual everyday observer to one that is critically analyzing in a different frame of reference, we're actually moving to a different reality with different knowledge available to us. And this applies to everything, from philosophy to science, even theater. In their own words, as the curtain rises, the spectator is transported to another world with its own meanings and an order that may or may not have much to do with the order of everyday life. As the curtain falls, the spectator returns to reality, that is, to the paramount reality of everyday life. It should be no surprise then when we say that the Infinity Stones may follow their own rules of ownership. 
The Marvel Universe, like any fiction, is its own reality. And they've built up this reality through countless characters and movies. Even though they try to cross over with our everyday world, running into various real people, places, or events, it still occupies its own reality separate from ours. With Marvel's reality in mind, how should we come to expect ownership of the Infinity Stones to work? Possession alone is too simple. Holding Captain America's shield doesn't mean you own it. It seems a display of the object's use is required, especially the more magical or advanced it becomes. Iron Man wasn't Iron Man while the suit was a prototype, and Thor isn't Thor until he lifts the hammer. But even use alone isn't enough to qualify ownership. When the Guardians of the Galaxy use an Infinity Stone, it doesn't seem like they own it. The last piece missing here is claim. When someone claims to own something, physically possesses it, and makes use of it, that's when they come to own it. What's more is that after these requirements are fulfilled, ownership stays with that person until somebody else can fulfill them. So even when Captain America's shield is confiscated, it's still his because nobody else gets to use it or claims to own it. Thanos claims to own the Infinity Stones. He may even come to hold them. But what it really comes down to is whether or not he can use them. There have been previous iterations in the comics where Thanos does use the Infinity Stones, and some where he fails to. So until the movie comes out, his ownership over the stones is still in question. It's interesting that in fiction we can come up with fairly simple rules for ownership. In real life we devout huge books of law to what ownership is and how to solve disputes. Could it be simpler than that? If we step outside ourselves and view our reality from a new perspective, can we use the knowledge gained to learn something more? But what do you guys think? Is ownership the product of what we learn in a reality? Or are there absolute rules that we can use to define it? Does all of this mean that Thanos will own the Infinity Stones? Let us know your thoughts in the comments and we'll continue the conversation below. So this video is made possible by these lovely owners of ideas. If this seems like something you want to be a part of, come join us. We are an open source community entirely run by volunteers, and you can check out our Discord and our forums, which are linked in the doobly-doo. We're also going to be starting a blog, and our first post is probably going to be about ownership and fiction. There were so many ideas that we came up with while working on this episode that we couldn't possibly fit all of them in the script. So this is our little way of making sure we can continue that conversation with you. Check it out!